I've watched so many videos of people talking about books and giving recommendations, and there's an itch in my brain that's been building. You've probably noticed it too, but if you think about it, for a given topic, there are always a few select books that you just see being talked about over and over again. And you rarely see videos showing off books that have just been published recently. But it's not like new books aren't being published. In fact, they're being published way faster than you might think. Go to a publisher's website and take a look for yourself. And mathematicians are pretty switched on, right? Why would they just rewrite something that's similar to a previous book on that subject? You'd think they'd be wanting to make it better. So why aren't we talking about these new books? Really, we're just banging on about the classics. I mean, even my lecture notes are recommending books that are 50, 60 years old when 10 new books on that subject have just been published recently from one publisher. Well, maybe it's us as the YouTubers that are doing a disservice by just banging on about these classics because they bring in views. Or maybe they're classics for a reason. Maybe they just won't be topped. Well, I'm gonna investigate into this. First, I want to know exactly what are the classics. If you asked 100 people for the best book on a given topic, what is the book you'd be recommended the most often? And are these actually good when you have the choice of all these new books. Well, this is one of the best things about having a community like mathhub.org. I've gone through over a thousand users reading journeys and found the books that appear in people's journeys the most often. And then I've read through the reviews to find out which ones are famous for the right reasons. Oh, and by the way, this is not a small sample size. A thousand user journeys means that this is as unbiased as you'll get from a YouTube channel talking about math books. So first up is Linear Algebra, and this book is the most frequently read book on the whole site, with overwhelmingly positive reviews. Linear Algebra Done Right by Axler. Somehow I've not read it, but of course I've seen this book all over the internet, and I can also really get behind Axler's determinant last approach. This has been bumped way up my reading list in terms of priority. The author's also made it free online, and so this book really deserves its role as a classic. Next up is Analysis. Similar in popularity to Linear Algebra Done Right, Understanding Analysis by Abbott is also everywhere. There is not a single bad word about this book in any review, and I've talked about my experience with this book on the channel before, but again, it really deserves its spot as a classic in analysis. I should mention that, somewhat concerningly, Rudin <laughs> was also a close second in terms of total number of readers, but the reviews there read very differently. <laughs> But these two books, so far, really do seem to be ubiquitous for the right reasons. But now topology, and the most read book here is Monkreads, and there are complaints. Complaints about it being boring, and also about being left in the dark on harder problems. And this was something I struggled with too, because the harder problems in topology often require a kind of creativity that you haven't really seen before up to that point. And so when I asked Gauss for book recommendations to help me with this, he recommended a book called Topology Through Inquiry, a book published 45 years later than Monkreys in 2019. And it looks class, but I never would have heard about it had I just searched on YouTube or taken the recommendations from my lecture list. And, and this is just one example. Next up is Algebraic Topology, and the most read book is Hatcher, with very positive reviews. I myself have really enjoyed it. I think it's hard, and this is another area that I struggled with, some problems requiring creativity in ways I just haven't seen before, but the explanations are clear. Next up is Proofs, and the most read book is How to Prove It, a structured approach, but it beat out the proof book that I read, a Concise Introduction to Pure Maths by Liebeck by just one reader. So both books have great reviews from people in terms of acting as a gateway into advanced maths. Next up is Abstract Algebra and by far the most read book is Dumb It and Foot. But weirdly there aren't that many reviews. So looking on YouTube you'll find the affiliate link merchant saying things like if you have to get one abstract algebra book get this one. But is this a thousand page dense beast which rarely stops to let you think and ponder. Is it the best option out there? Surely one of these many books that have come out in the last 5-10 years is better than this in terms of learning algebra. And finally PDE's the most read book is Evans and I don't really know anything about this but Mathematical Toolbox has talked about this book in a similar way, really questioning why do these books dominate? So looking at that, it's clear that some books just dominate, some for the right reasons, and some I'm, I'm really not so sure. And I think the issue lies in the fact that when it comes to mass books, the word of other people has a huge impact, because always choosing a book feels like a big risk, right? 
maybe financially, but if anything, it's more your time investment. So if you see someone saying that they like this book, it was great, they learned from it well, then it completely makes sense to go for that book because it's a big ocean, right? And there's a life jacket. But then the issue lies with, well, maybe mathematicians pushing books, suffering from the curse of knowledge, this detachment from actually remembering what it feels like to learn the subject for the first time. But I think the bigger issue is with us, the YouTubers. Because really, over the last 10 years, there's only been a few big sources of information about books, and then a lot of parrots. But one person can only read so much. And so when you start profiting from telling people your opinions on books, that's a dangerous place, especially when there's so much influence you have. So my mission moving forward is to explore these new books because from my limited exposure so far, I've already seen authors doing things that are hugely beneficial to students. And more importantly, I want to encourage as many people as possible to share their experiences with as diverse a range of books as possible and really decentralize where this information is coming from. And if in one year's time, Rudin is still floating around this list, then I'll hang my boots up.